Welcome to Wild About Nature. Yes, that is a cat. Anyone who watches my videos from time gone by will know that little Spooky is allowed out with me because she's extremely well trained, even to the point where she looks at Bird, then looks at me and says, can I have that? No, of course you can't. But she is really good. It's, I'm kind of further away than I'd like to be, but I thought I'd, before I show you the nest, I thought I'd show you these, my ponds, which I've got laid out down here. This is gonna make you think I'm extremely strange, or some of you at least, and you're probably right, in fairness to you, but as you get closer to nature, you start to become more in line with it and have a sort of natural understanding of it. It happens when you expose yourself to something for so long. And I do, I have, I kind of want to live as close to it as I can with a symbiotic nature and not affect it badly. So why have I laid ponds out? Well, I collect rainwater. I don't want things to drown, so I put bits of wood in here for mammals, especially hedgehogs, because they can, believe it or not, jump and they can get on things like this but not get out. These aren't proof, uh, future proofed yet for wildlife ponds, so I will be building in ramps into these, but they're not there yet because they're essentially goldfish ponds that I bought second hand on eBay or any other um, online auction sites are available. Um, so why have I got loads of them? Well, there's 3,000 litres of water here, and if you add that to my 1,000 litres of rainwater butts, that's a lot. Over the years, by doing this type of thing, I don't often use ponds, but I normally use troughs for collecting and water butts. I reckon I've saved about three to five hundred pounds. So there's your first reason, you know, that's way offset the cost of any water butts. It's a lot of money. And if you're into that side of thing, that's not necessarily why I do it, but it's a nice, you know, it's a nice thing, added bonus. It's, a, it's definitely worthwhile. But I even go out, you can see these are, are getting full, but I go out in the rain when the water butts are full because I, I just can't resist it. I have to go out and decant into these as your first uh, clue about the weirdness. Secondly, you know, the carbon footprint of making water is huge. The energy it takes to make it and deliver it and pump it and let it come out of your tap, it's huge, it's colossal. So anything, anytime you collect water, you're, you're benefiting carbon, your carbon footprint. Thirdly, chemicals. Well, rain, the tap water's got chlorinate, uh, uh, chlorinated, yeah, it's chlorinated, chlorine in it, and fluoride in England. I don't know if you have that over in the US or anywhere else, but we, we have loads of chemicals. And even, you can't put, even put it in your pond, really, but without let it stand, letting it stand for a couple of days right, and letting it evaporate off, because it's not generally natural, and anything that's not natural is not good. Now, the third reason, you're gonna think I'm a little strange here, if you don't already, I like not to I don't like to breed mosquitoes it's the wrong word if they if they arrive and they're quite happy then I leave them because birds and bats to name just two species love to eat them and bats particularly at night because mosquitoes come out at night and if you don't have these you're removing a really valuable food source I don't know if you can see any in there there you go there's there's definitely some in there um so if they happen to arrive in water that I've laid out, well, good for them. I'm lucky I don't get bitten. And I, when I turned vegetarian, I stopped getting bitten so much. And when I turned vegan, never. I literally could stand in a swarm and nothing will happen. I don't know if it's got something to do with eating red meat. I have heard that red meat attracts them when you eat it, but I, I don't know. But I'm, I guess I could just be lucky. So anyway, that's the little piece on rainwater harvesting. Thanks to Zander, by the way, who made my water butt adapter and said it's working really well. How brilliant is that? I'm really pleased. So this, this is the, the temporary nest box I put up, just to somewhere to put it and it looks nice, before I placed it in the trees in a kind of dappled, shady, sunny but shady area. Because I'd never put, I would never even think of putting a nest box in full sun, especially a dark coloured one. It's just going to cook the chicks. So, unfortunately, they laid a nest in it, so I just kept a close eye on it. I was thinking about putting a white paint or a white sheet on the front when they were feeding them, because they must have been roasting. But they fledged. You can see here the hole. It's a telltale sign of how long they've been nesting for. The hole is well worn and it was just painted a couple of months ago. So I know it's had a lot of use. I know how long you know, it takes to rear chicks. 
so I, I kind of worked it out anyway but when I checked the other night they had indeed gone so I thought it would be an ideal opportunity to open the nest and I haven't opened it yet I've taken all the screws out except one now these are great tits in here they're yellow and black if you know your birds a bit bigger than blue tits generally blue tits like about 28 millimeter hole great tits around 32 which is what this is and um, blue tits are a much smaller nest box they will nest in tiny little areas whereas great tits and I haven't looked in it but it should be a relatively the whole area should be covered in nest um, even without a nest being discernible and like a, a mat if you like and they need a larger area so I don't wouldn't have thought I'd ever get blue tits in here but great tits did come so let's take off the screw final bit I'm going to do this with one hand if you watch my videos I'm always videoing and doing stuff with the other hand it's like the worst way I need like someone to, I need a cameraman but my wife's not up for it so oh the paint stuck yeah I couldn't do it with one hand so I had to pause the video and take it off the paint was stuck on there and it's never been opened so okay we're in a position to open it now so let's do that it's nice and loose now there you go so wow isn't that cool look at that that's amazing so this I imagine would what be what you'd expect and certainly from what I've read what I'd expect from a great tit nest so they've they've uh, filled the whole area up with nesting material it looks like there's a tennis bit of a tennis ball in there something red down there with material loads of moss which is obviously a preferred sub you know substance for the material because it is everywhere and the cat hair has been used which is awesome these guys were no doubt responsible for my uh, my cat hair container being emptied so readily earlier in the year I don't know if you can see it I'll try and show you where it is it's there there you go middle of the screen it's refilled because birds different bird species nest all year round so a telltale sign and I can just see it on the side are little tufts sticking out if you do put it in a little cage like that you can tell if something's used it because obviously they're poking their beaks through and pulling it out and you can see tufts on the right hand side there so wow that's really good I'm really impressed with that it's about two inches three inches thick at the back about an inch and a half at the front absolutely amazing stunning I'm actually going to leave it I was going to clear it out tonight and show you and pull it out and show you that but I'm not it's only May or June now so if they do decide to do a second clutch they might come back to the same nest it's doubtful in my experience to see them use a nest but maybe the same pair will maybe they'll smell themselves or, or sense or know they were there and be quite happy to nest in it again so perhaps I'll put it all back together and uh, and leave it and clear it out September October which is what I normally do I've had a robin's nest this year blue tits and this one so it's been quite successful for a small garden I've got some other nests in trees which you don't need to clear out obviously because they'll just fall to pieces naturally and there's loads of spaces in the tree to, to nest so wow really pleased about that that's really educational for me as well you can actually see where they've been pecking the top the baby birds so obviously they've been eager to get out because they've scraped like a really they've scraped the wood off in one place obviously eager to fledge and getting restless so anyway thank you for watching it's just a quick video i hope you like it please like and subscribe and follow me on twitter remember all the money <coughs> all the money isn't a, a good term for what, how much you make when you haven't only got 350 subscribers but they're all good subscribers and that's what counts but all the money does go to the world land trust and or raise you know, making habitats here none of it is personal gain i assure you so please watch the ads like and subscribe and follow me on twitter and i'll speak to you soon Ta-da.